friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks Workshop. If you get into building and repairing musical instruments, there will come a time when you will want to do some veneering and maybe making your own decorative bindings or maybe laminate a neck or something like that. If for a long time now, I've done everything the hard way. I've you know, just used all kinds of clamps and weights and things to press down veneers and press down thin strips of wood to glue them together and, and put them in, you know, my big flat bench vise and things like that. I've just done every kind of technique you can imagine. But what I needed on a lot of occasions, and I just didn't have, was a vacuum press system. If you don't know what a vacuum press system is, uh, basically it's just what it sounds like. You put everything inside of a vacuum bag, you suck all the air out, and the atmospheric pressure pushes everything together and holds it in place. Works like a charm. So I got to thinking I really do need one of those, and I thought, you know, before I buy it, I'm just going to contact Vacuum Pressing Systems. They're out of uh, Brunswick, Maine, to see what they say, and if they'd be interested in possibly uh, working with me as a sponsor deal, and I would do a video showing them how good that product is. And they sent me a really nice system. I'm going to show you in this video how I'm using it to help me with my instrument business. It is an awesome product, it truly is. So just to be perfectly clear, this system was provided to me by the company. I did not pay for it, so therefore this is a sponsored video in that regard. So let's get started by taking a look at the system and what it comes with and uh, how you would go about using it. This is what I received, and I'll show you a close-up there so that you can see the model and everything. It's a uh, very nice uh, compact system. It's called VacuPress Compact 150, in case you can't read it. You can adjust the vacuum switch here, which I haven't adjusted yet. You don't, it comes pre-adjusted, but if you're at different levels of sea level, you may need to adjust this. I'm at about 500 feet of sea level here, so I think the adjustments that come from the factory are pretty close to right on. You have a... Uh, automatic setting with your switch and a uh, continuous. Continuous is just what it says, the thing will run continuously. If you put it on automatic, it will draw a certain vacuum, shut off and hold until that vacuum is released and then it'll kick back on. On the back, you can see that it has a quick connect for a hose and that's really all that it mounts to except for the cord. You've got a standard, in my case, I have the standard 110 cord here. And there's Vacuum Systems contact information. You can see it right there. So that's the that's the unit. It's very small, as you can tell. It's it's weighty. It does it. You know, it weighs a few pounds. I'm gonna just guess it roughly at 10 pounds. In the kit, it also came with this vacuum hose. And there's a filter on this end here. <clears throat> I guess to filter out moisture and glue or anything like that to keep it from getting in the pump. This is your suction end. This is the end that goes in the pump. <coughs> this is the end that goes through the bag, and I'll show you about that here in just a moment. They have uh, at least two different kinds of bags. This is their extruded polyurethane. The way you close up the bag is it comes with these, uh, with these little parts here. And there are clips here on this one that you can clip it together. This goes through here and, and everything wraps around this and then you clamp this down. This is, this is hollow as you can see. And you clamp this over that to make an airtight seal. So you just squeeze this together. So it, it works pretty well. It's a pretty tough squeeze, I'll admit, especially with this thick, uh, thick bag that I have here. So I'm going to show you a couple more accessories that came with it, and then I'm going to show you a couple things that you need to make in order to make it work well for you. He sent some extra nipples in here. This is a patch kit as well, so if the vinyl bag should get a tear in it, then there's some patches in here. But these extra nipples, I'll show you how they're used. For instance, right here is a good example. You put one of these nipples in here, the end of this suction tube it goes through the nipple in the bag and then it goes into this part right here. And that makes a very good airtight seal. This board, as you can see, I made it with little tiny slots all through it. And the reason for that is for airflow. So this suction comes through here, 
then it goes, then it can, if you had something sitting on top of here, then the airflow can go right down these cracks and suck the air out. So that's why I made this. They refer to this board as the platen. Now I made mine long and narrow because that was the first thing I was going to work on. You can make these platens square and flat and have lines through them like out of MDF or something like that for larger pieces of veneer. I was going to be working on thin strips and I thought this would probably be more handy for me at least to begin with. I may make some more different size platens later as I get into other things. Now I flattened this off really well, rounded all the corners off because you don't want anything that can catch on your bag. In addition to that, because I was making really thin, narrow pieces, I made myself a couple of uh, calls to go one on the bottom and one on the top. These are the same size as the strips I was gluing together. My material I'm gluing together is, goes in between these, then all of it sits right on top of the platen like this. And as you can see, even if I cover up the hole, because I've got you know, airflow through here, then that sucks the air right on out and everything gets really sucked down very tight. It also comes with some foam strips. Now these, I believe, are useful if like say you wanted to have a hold down and you could put these say on your uh, work table or make a large platen, you know, where the hose could go up through it. And you put these around the perimeter of your work uh, and then and then suck the air out from underneath your work and it will suck it down to the table or whatever So that's I believe that's what these foam strips are for I have not used this yet So it can be used as a work hold down in addition to a vacuum pressing situation like I used it took me close to an hour to sand all these th strips down. There's 12 strips. Each strip is 22 thousandths of an inch. That's for my millimeter friends about one half millimeter. If I measure them in group, 12 strips now keep in mind, it measures at a quarter of an inch thick. <laughs> so that's 12 strips of wood. I ran them all through my sander without a backer board or anything. Try that on your own sander and then send me an email tell me how much fun that was. <laughs> it's incredible. Each piece is so thin that it just, look, look how it bends. It's just like a piece of paper in your hand. See how it just wobbles and thin? It's so thin it's just, you can twist it into a, into a knot if you want to. You can tie a bow tie with it. But now we're going to turn this scrap wood into something very highly valuable. To give you a better idea of what I was talking about, these are the two calls. Now they're about, oh, a little more than a quarter inch thick, or roughly about a quarter inch thick. And they're gonna go sandwich, they're gonna sandwich all these pieces of laminate. And now they'll lay on top of the platen. The platen, uh, you've seen there in the video how I made that. I think the tricky part for me is getting the bag closed up without all the stuff moving. Um, and especially after the glue gets on it, that may be a trick. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. You know, you just, I'm sure you learn tricks to doing this stuff after you uh, do it a few times. It says it takes it about a minute for it to pull this all down. I still have it, you know, it, there's still an inch of height there probably or close to it that it's going to suck down around but that's better than uh, about two inches or so and boy you can see it dragging in tight now oh my gosh yeah you can just tell it's that's awesome and the pump will kick off on its own once it sucks all the air out and with that platen see that lets the air go down through there everywhere it really you can tell it's getting tight
it really has it stuck together. You can see it's, it's not coming apart. I don't know exactly how many pounds per square inch that is, but it's quite a bit. And uh, that's going to be awesome. Now keep in mind that's still a dry fit up, but I wanted to do that before I got to the glue because I wanted to see the problems I would have. I think we're about ready to try it with the glue. That worked wonderful. That's better than anything I've ever done before when it comes to gluing up laminates. It is just wonderful to be able to clamp something like that up that easily. 12 pieces of laminate, just like that. And you can see the uh, pump has kicked off already and it's holding pressure. Man, that, you can tell it's just stuck together. It's just awesome. That's going to come out perfectly flat. You couldn't do it any better. It's been 24 hours. We're going to take it out of here and see what it turned out like. I didn't leave the press on for 24 hours. I only left the press on for an hour or so. And uh, then I just let it set overnight. Let's see what we got. Hopefully we can get it apart. Yeah. Ah, good. It didn't stick too bad. I was afraid it would stick and it, it did look like it stuck a little bit. Not too bad though. This one here's stuck. Hopefully we can get it apart though. Yeah, I think so, good. And then I think we got one that's stuck to itself, or to another one. Ah, good, they all came apart. So we got four pieces there, three laminates each. We'll take a close look at that. Well, as I was telling you, this is all made from scrap wood, so I wasn't expecting 100% perfection anyway. But uh, this one piece is not that great. The rest of these turned out very, very good. Let's see if we can get the camera to focus on the edges. And they're all glued up really nice. And, and so th this could be like a purfling inside of the binding on the top of a guitar or something like that. Now you would cut this into thin strips. So I'm gonna do that too and I'll show you what the thin strips look like. Now this is perfectly evenly clamped because it's even air pressure everywhere. Everything got squeezed at an equal amount and it's just perfect. I mean, you couldn't, couldn't ask for anything better. Well, I'll be perfectly honest with you. Some of this didn't turn out that well. There's a couple of problems, I think. Number one, I don't think I used enough glue. That's the first problem. Most of it's okay. I mean, like, you know, there's quite a bit of damage, but most of it turned out fine. So, like, there's quite a few pieces that are perfect and they can be used, no question. But there is quite a bit of damage. Secondly, uh, the pieces I used weren't select pieces. In other words, there was, like, little knots and little holes and, you know, staining and stuff. So... This didn't turn out perfect stuff, but it turned out enough that it was worth the effort and it was a good learning experience. And uh, it's really not bad at all for, uh, you know, the pieces I got out of it are perfectly usable and there will be enough there to do at least one guitar, if not more. For those of you who are wondering about this purfling that I made, maybe even wondering, is it worth your time and effort? You know, just looking on Stumac's site, and, and trust me, I'm not picking on Stumac. I use Stumac all the time. I think they're a great company. But just as an example, uh, a piece of purfling like this that's about 38 inches long is almost $8. Now, mine aren't that long. Mine are less, mine are uh, just a little more than half that long. So if you take two pieces of mine, roughly there's about $8 right there. So I ended up with nine pairs, so nine times eight, you know. I mean, that's kind of the money we're talking about here. And uh, that's not bad money uh, to make. And that was a quick and dirty effort. I mean, I, to be honest, I didn't uh, expect much out of this because this was, like I said, very, very scrap material. This, this material was going in the trash probably anyway. And instead of doing that, I turned it into a lot of money here. I'm getting ready to make the neck for my next mandolin that I have to build for a customer. And we're going to do the glue up with the vacuum system. We'll be 
able to keep that book matched like that, and we'll have a laminate in between here yet. As good as this vacuum press is for making the laminates, uh, for making those little specialty bindings and purflings, I think it's even going to prove itself much, much more valuable here for my neck glue ups that I always make laminated necks. This has always been one of my most dreaded things to do because it's just not easy getting it all lined up and getting it all glued and everything and all the clamping. It's just a real kind of a pain in the neck. This should make it far easier. I've got the uh, pieces aligned the way I want them. I'm going to lay them over on their side like this, one at a time, turn them over, get glue on both sides, and just keep turning them over. I've got my platen in there with the hose run into it already. I'm going to slide this in place. I've got a new call rounded off for the top. That'll keep the bag from getting tore because those corners are very sharp. A little bit tricky to maintain alignment on this, and I think it's going to work. Took a little longer that time, uh, I guess maybe because there's more stuff inside there, you know, it's got to suck the air out of the wood even. Kick back on. It's going to cycle like that for a while, I'm sure. We're going to let that sit uh, for, oh, an hour or two like that. This has been in here for about three hours now, and I figure it's time to open it up to see what we've got. I'm looking at the glue squeeze out along the edge, and some of it looks like it could be dry, but it also looks like it could still be wet. I can see how it could take a lot longer to dry in a, you know, in a vacuum like this. I'm just going by common sense again, and it just seems like that would be the case because, after all, why do you put the lid back on your glue or on any other container? It's to keep the air out and keep it from drying out. So there's no air in this. You would think it wouldn't dry at all. So I'm just curious. It's been three hours. Under normal circumstances, this would be plenty dry enough to take the clamps off. So let's just see what we have. You can still see it's still a little bit wet. I don't think it's loose or anything. I think it's permanently bonded. I think if you give it another hour for sure now in the open air, it ought to be fine. It really seemed like it did a great job in there. I couldn't be happier with that part. I'm going to get a damp cloth and try to clean off the glue that's on the bag on the inside there. Well, I'm impressed with that. I, if, unless you've done this, you really don't know how difficult that is. It's difficult in a lot of ways. It's difficult to keep the alignment, and I will admit the alignment isn't perfect this way, but it's as good as I would have done the other way with the old clamping system. But this was so much simpler. You just slide it in there, turn it, flip a switch, you're done. Well, there you go. That's what it looks like. Give you a better look at it. Now, this is after I cleaned it up. Just so you know, I had everything square before I started this process. So that way, when I get done gluing this up, I can take it to the joiner with a square fence, lay this square edge along the fence, slide the top across, and let the uh, joiner knives cut this flat so everything's flat and square that way. And then I just took and lightly sanded it on the, on the belt sander just to uh, clean it up. And you can see there, I think, if it's focusing, that it's got a very nice joint all the way you know as tight as it can be perfectly even i really like the vacuum press that is just awesome so i just want to say thank you very much to vacuum pressing systems for uh, giving me that uh, wonderful vacuum press it will be put to great use you'll see it in a lot of future videos i've spent uh, nearly 40 years without it 
and I'll never be without it again, I'll tell you that. <laughs> it's just way too easy compared to the old, old method of all those clamps. Oh my gosh, that is such a headache. That's why it's always been a nightmare, and this just made the job pleasant. Thank you for watching. Thank <laughs> you.